is for everybody. And Pi is for everybody that already ate their vegetables. Our next guest is a mathematician who's finding new delicious ways to teach some old disciplines. If I told you that studying math was as easy as Pi, would you believe me? Well, pure mathematics can be. Pure math is about studying one thing and seeing a pattern, and then asking, well, if that's a pattern, then where else can I find that pattern? And today, mathematics professor Dr. Eugenia Chang is going to help me learn more about pure mathematics by baking. I really love understanding how things work. Like when little children keep asking why, but why, but why? I was like that and I never stopped asking why. Welcome to the kitchen where baking and math join together to make delicious and logical treats. I hear that you're a pure mathematician. Mm -hmm. What even is that? Pure math is about spotting patterns and understanding how things work, often so that you can make things yourself. Ooh. Let's start with pie. What makes a pie a pie? I'd say it starts with a crust and then some fruit filling, a second crust on top, and then you bake it. But what about this? Is this a pie? It doesn't seem to have fruit in it. Hmm, no, it, it's a quiche, but I could see why I would call it a pie. Mm-hmm, and what about this? Is this a pie? Actually, chicken pot pie is one of my favorite kinds of pie, but so... chicken is not a fruit. But it still could be classified as a pie. Mm-hmm. So if we define pie as something with at least one crust and a filling, then we can make an endless number of pies. Apple pie, cherry pie, shepherd's pie, pizza pie. I guess math really is as easy as pie. Let's move on to cakes and we'll put abstraction to work. Have you heard of a Battenberg cake? It's a great example of an abstract mathematical structure, so I thought we could make some. Ah, oh, that sounds great. A Battenberg cake's distinctive two-by-two -two check pattern alternates pink and yellow. Wait, 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 wait. I promise this will tie back into pure math at the end. To make the cake batter, we mix butter, eggs, sugar, flour, and baking powder. Then we add pink food coloring to half of the batter. We pour the batter into a tin and add dividers to keep the colors separate. And after 30 minutes in the oven... So now the key is the Battenberg pattern. Mm -hmm. We have two colors of cake, and we don't want the same color of cake to touch the same color of cake, because that would be terrible. <laughs> so then the question is, what possible patterns are there? So I think we can do it diagonally so that none of the pink is touching the pink. Right. We spread the jam onto 12 by 8 marzipan rectangles and all of our cake pieces. Then we roll it up, make a few finishing trims, and our beautiful Battenberg cakes are ready. Look at that, it's a Battenberg cake <laughs> and a mathematical structure. From adding zeros and ones to rotational symmetry of rectangles to multiplying positive and negative numbers, the list of examples of the Battenberg principle goes on and on. Or should I say on and off and on and off? For example, we can make a little grid of what happens if we multiply positive one and negative one. Look what we've got here. It's the same as a Battenberg cake pattern. Ah. We're spotting the same pattern in different places. And once you start spotting them, you can see more and more of them. And then you can ask yourself things like, how about bigger Battenberg cakes? And that's exactly how mathematicians think. They don't stop with anything. You admire it and then you go, wait, what if I do this? What if I do something else? <laughs> Eugenia loves showing that math can be a piece of cake. And I love that you can have your math and eat it too. Thank you so much for teaching me that you can make your own rules to solve problems and recognize patterns, and it can be delicious.